What's up folks, Crushers G here, back with my guide to Razer. Now before we get into it, I just gotta put it out there that unlike Noel, who I felt needed some love in the primary DPS department, there are plenty of Razer guides out there already and they all probably cover the same thing. That being said, lots of you asked for this guide, so hopefully I'll be able to add some value to it. I will also be condensing everything into two videos for Razer, rather than doing another six video series which means the videos could be longer, but as usual, I'll have the detailed timestamps in the description for easy browsing. In part one, we'll be going over Razer's kit, talk about his general playstyle, his artifact choices, stat priorities, and weapon options. And in part two, we will explore his team compositions and briefly take a look at my Razer and the team that I run him with. All right, so Razer can basically be summed up into one sentence. He is an Electro Claymore user whose sole purpose is to serve as the primary DPS. It's that simple. As far as I am aware, there is no other character currently in the game who has a kit that is as selfish as Razor's. Yes, even Klee brings more support value than Razor does despite what everyone says about her. I personally run Klee in the support role by the way, but maybe I'll talk about that more in another video. Anyway, you've probably heard me describe Razer as a field hogger in a few of my videos, and this is the reason why. There's literally only one tiny aspect of his kit that could benefit other party members, and it's a talent that some other characters have too. But more on that when we get to it. Now I know this intro probably makes it sound like I don't like Razer very much, but it's really quite the opposite. I love the fact that I don't need to think about him in multiple roles and just need to focus everything into making sure he does the most damage. It's kind of like how I built my Noel. Simplicity seems to be my preference in this game, I guess, which is why I don't really run any reaction comps despite having the necessary characters for them. Now, another great thing about Razor is that he absolutely does not require any constellations to function fully as a primary DPS. In other words, Razor is very free to play friendly if you manage to pull him with your free pulls, that is. Anyway, let's briefly go over his kit. Now his normal attack chain is pretty standard for Claymore users, you've got 4 hits in the chain with the last hit dealing the most damage. His charge attack is also the standard spin to win affair, but it is almost never used due to how his burst works. Yeah, Razor is defined by his burst, everything else revolves around it. Next we have his E skill. His E skill performs an electro attack and gives Razor 1 electro sigil, and he can have a max of 3 sigils at any time. Now these sigils increase Razor's energy recharge rate by 20% per sigil for a total of 60%. Holding his E skill charges a large 360 degree AoE electro attack that deals significantly more damage, consuming all active sigils and providing Razor with 5 energy per sigil consumed. Tapping has a 6 second cooldown and charging has a 10 second cooldown. And finally, we get to what makes Razor Razor. His burst. His burst summons a wolf spirit that hovers over him, dealing additional damage as electro damage every time Razor hits a target. Your attack speed is also increased significantly during this period, and additionally, during his burst, your charge attack is disabled, and you can only use normal attacks. Now, while in burst, Razor gains electro resistance and he is granted immunity to damage from the electro charge status. However, the burst ends if you swap characters mid-burst. But doing so will restore a small amount of energy to Razor depending on how much time is left on the burst when you swapped. His burst costs 80 energy, lasts for 15 seconds, and has a 20 second cooldown. Now a quick note about how damage is calculated in his burst. While the description states that the bonus electro damage is dealt as a portion of Razor's normal attack damage, it does not in fact deal a portion of his final damage of his normal attack. Now this has caused many, myself included for the longest time, to incorrectly assume that anything that increases his normal attack damage would naturally increase the extra damage as well. Now what it actually does is it deals the stated percent of his normal attack's skill modifier as electro damage. In English, basically, this means it deals a portion of his normal attack damage, but without the physical damage modifier and without the normal attack damage bonuses from gear and stuff applied to it. 
It is then treated as its own electro attack and thus benefits from increases to electro damage, crit stats, etc. Alright, let's look at his passive talents. There's nothing too special here. The first one reduces the cooldown of his E skill by 18% and it makes activating his burst reset the cooldown of his E skill. The second talent gives him 30% energy recharge while he is below 50% energy. And I think you can see a trend here with Razor. Energy recharge and more energy recharge. The final talent reduces sprint stamina consumption by 20% for the entire team. Now this is the only support value Razor brings to the team, but it's also a pretty common talent, a few other characters have it. Okay, now we get to his constellations. As mentioned earlier, Razor is one of the few characters who legitimately does not require any constellations to excel in his role as a primary DPS, and unlike many other characters whose constellations could sometimes change the way they are played entirely, all Razor's constellations do is basically give him a little more damage, a little more crit rate, and more energy recharge. Absolutely nothing about the way he is played is changed by his constellations. His C1 increases his damage by 10% for 8 seconds after picking up an elemental orb or particle. Now this refers to orbs and particles that recover energy after killing a target or using an E skill. It doesn't refer to the electro sigils created by his E skill. His C2 increases his crit rate against enemies with less than 30% HP by 10%. Of course, C3 and C5, the other standard plus 3 levels affair. And C4 reduces the target's defense by 15% for 7 seconds if they are hit by the charged version of his E skill. I guess this could technically count as having support value, but 7 seconds is pretty short, so you won't gain much value from it using him as a support. And finally, his C6 causes him to deal additional electro damage worth 100% of his attack once every 10 seconds with a normal attack. If this happens outside of burst, the extra electro damage will grant Razor an electro sigil. Now overall, this is a really lackluster C6 in my opinion. Razor's burst is already pretty easy to keep up 100% of the time, even at C0. Giving him more energy regen outside of burst with a mere 100% attack worth of damage every 10 seconds for a C6? I don't know, it just sounds pretty bad to me. But hey, that's what we got and that's also the reason why you don't need a C6 Razor. Alright, let's talk about his general playstyle. Razor's entire playstyle revolves around getting his burst up, using it, smashing stuff with normal attacks, and rinse and repeat. Now, as mentioned, his kit is very selfish and is built to ensure Razor is able to get his burst back up as quickly as possible. So be sure to charge his E skill whenever you have 3 sigils. It provides a lot of energy regen for Razor and is crucial to keeping his burst up as often as possible, no matter what constellation level you're at. And that's pretty much all there is to Razor, folks. He is that simple to use. Okay, let's talk about artifact choices and stat priorities. I'll do the artifacts first, because it's pretty easy. In the early game, you have limited choices, so just use whatever you have that gives you crit rate or percent attack. Berserkers, Sojourners, or a combination of both will pretty much be your go-to sets for a while. Now in the mid to late game, when you start getting access to 4-star artifact drops from domains and such, you can consider two-piece combinations of Braveheart, Berserker, Sojourners, Martial Artists, or even Thundering Fury. However, if possible, I'd personally recommend 4-piece Martial Artists because Razor's E skill has a very short cooldown, so you'd be able to keep the full buff up all the time for a total of 40% increase to normal attack damage. Now this set bonus is so good for Razor that if you're lucky enough to get well rolled pieces, they could last you well into the end game. Okay, now for the end game options. First, of course, we have 4 piece gladiators, and need I explain this? 18% attack, 35% increase to normal attack damage. This is pretty much the set to aim for in the long run because it does give Razor the most damage overall. However, with the loot tables the way they are, getting a well-optimized gladiator set may not be easy depending on your luck. So failing to get 4-piece gladiators, your next option would be 2-piece gladiators and 2-piece bloodstain. Now this works out to be exactly 10% worse than 4-piece gladiators because fizz damage, which is what bloodstain gives, and normal attack damage, which is what 4-piece gladiator gives, are calculated in the same multiplier pool. So when I say 10%, I mean 35% minus 25% is 10%. I don't mean actually 10% less damage. 
If you really worked it out, it probably works out to about 5% less damage overall versus 4-piece gladiators, depending on your stats. Alright, next we have 2-piece Bloodstain and 2-piece Martial Artist. You can kind of view this as the upgraded version of the 4-piece Martial Artist because it essentially gives you the exact same damage multipliers, 25% plus 15%, but you now have access to more 5-star pieces. I would recommend going Martial Artist on the Timepiece and the Flower because Martial Artist can only roll up to 4 stars with the remaining 3 slots dedicated to 2-piece Bloodstain and a random 5-star artifact. Now with very good stat rolls, this setup could actually rival the damage output of a full 5-star 2-piece Bloodstain 2-piece Gladiator setup. And it could even come very close to a full 4-piece Gladiators. And lastly, we have 2-piece Bloodstain and 2-piece Thundering Fury, which is what I am currently using on my Razor. I was using 2-piece Gladiators, but I switched to 2-piece Thundering Fury because my Thundering Fury pieces had excellent substat rolls. And frankly, the bosses haven't been kind to me with glad drops lately. They need to get their act together. I'm sick of getting wandering troop drops. Why this combination works is because Razor deals both electro and physical damage during his burst. Yes, he does much more physical damage than electro damage, but electro damage still counts for about 25% of his total damage output. So in the absence of good gladiator drops, this will suffice for now. So in a nutshell, don't sweat the endgame options too much, folks. The difference between all the options is very minimal, everything else equal. We're talking about plus minus a 5% damage difference either way. The point is to use the combination that gives you the best stats. And this segues nicely into the next part, stat priorities. Now quick plug, if you need help calculating your damage to find upgrades, check out my downloadable damage calculator. The card is in the top right corner and the link is in the description. So Razor is your run of the mill attack based Claymore user. His stat priorities are very simple to break down. Crit rate, crit damage followed by fizz damage and percent attack. My usual recommendation is that you aim for about 50% crit rate first then put everything else into crit damage with percent attack on the timepiece and fizz damage on the goblet. However, if you've watched any number of my videos, you'll know that my stance on Razor's goblet is kind of tentative. If you want more info as to why this is the case, check out my damage calculation video, link also in the description. The short version is, Razor gains physical damage from his ascensions and has access to lots of sources that increase his bonus damage multiplier. Going Fizz Damage on the Goblet may not give you as much of a damage boost as you think it will. Now Fizz Damage is still the most ideal choice, of course. But the point is, for Razor specifically, don't sweat it if all you have is a percent attack Goblet. Because depending on your stats, you might actually, in certain situations, be able to gain more damage using a well-rolled attack Goblet over a crappy rolled physical damage one. Okay, that's it for stat priorities, let's look at his weapon options. And I'll do this in the same progression format as I did the artifacts. Now if you do pull Razor really early in the game, I'd highly recommend that you make the long journey to this spot on the map and pick up the Skyrider Greatsword ASAP. It is a long walk for a new player, but I promise it's worth the track. It'll simply be lying on the ground, right here, just loot it. This Claymore is hands down the best in slot 3 star Claymore for Razor. It gives Fizz damage as its secondary bonus and a stacking attack buff as its special bonus. If you get it to refine 5, it'll generally outscale most of the 4 star options and will last you well into level 70 to 80. After that, of course, the sheer difference in base attack values from 3 stars to 4 stars starts taking over. Now, the Skyrider Greatsword is a drop-only item, so you can't gacha for it. I've talked about it in a Noel video, but you guys may not have watched that video, so I'll just repeat myself again. You have a chance to get this from any exquisite or above chest around the world, and you'll probably very, very highly likely be able to find the additional four copies that it takes to get it to refine five, as long as you do your chest hunting. I've personally cleared all the chests in Mondstadt and Liyue, and I've found enough copies to max refine this Claymore more than twice. A free 3-star weapon that'll last you all the way to level 80 is a pretty amazing thing, folks. However, if you're lazy or just want to get going ASAP, another good starter option is of course the Debate Club. You get that from Wishes, and it's a pretty common pull. 
that'll last you till you get to the 4-star craftables. In the mid to late game, if you don't have the Skyrider Greatsword, the prototype Aminus is your best bet. It's free, it's a 4-star, it has percent attack as its secondary and a chance to deal a huge hit every 15 seconds. Now this Claymore will last you till the end game, or unless you buy the Battle Pass and choose the Serpent Spine. Now if you did buy the Battle Pass and you did choose the Serpent Spine, this would be pretty much the best in slot 4-star Claymore for Razor until you get the 5-star options. The Serpent Spine gives crit rate as a secondary, with a stacking damage buff as its bonus for a max of 30% more multiplicative damage. It does increase the damage you take by 15% though, so be wary of that. Razor is already very paper. Also, between the 3-star Skyrider Greatsword, the 4-star Prototype Aminus, the 5-star Skyward Pride and Gravestone, Razor is definitely not short on weapon options, so consider your Battle Pass choices carefully because the sword and the catalyst are very good options as well. And finally, we come to the 5 star weapons. There are currently only two available, but we know the approximate stats of the new Claymore, called the Unforged, and it's round the corner, so I'll just include that as well. Now quickly going over each Claymore, at Refine Rank 1, now the Skyward Pride has Energy Recharge as its secondary stat, it also increases damage by 8%, and deals physical damage worth 80% of your total attack per hit for the first 8 hits after activating your burst. Now the Wolf's Gravestone has percent attack as its secondary, and it further increases your percent attack by 20% from the first half of its bonus. The second half of its bonus increases the entire party's attack by 40% for 12 seconds when hitting an enemy below 30% HP. Now this effect can occur once every 30 seconds for 12 seconds. And lastly, the Unforge has percent attack as its secondary, it increases your shield strength by 25% and grants a stacking buff that increases attack by 4% for 8 seconds every time you hit a target. This buff stacks up to 5 times for a total of 20%. Additionally, while protected by a shield, this bonus is double. Alright, so let's hop over to my damage calculator. Now this is a test version with the Skyward Pride calculation option. The current live version doesn't have this option because I'm still testing it. Now I won't show every calculation because it'll take forever, but I just wanted you guys to have an idea of how I calculate things. With this, I calculated the damage potentials for each weapon at rank 1 refine, with level 80 values on my level 90 razor as he is geared right now. And this is how it worked out. We have the Skyward Pride at 8673, the Gravestone at 8784, and the Unforged at 8312, with no shield up. But considering how my Razor team has Diona, this value could be closer to 8903 most of the time. Now I also calculated the R5 stats because I know some of you have asked in a few of my other videos for R5 calculations as well. And I'll just put this up there, you can just read it. So what does this mean for 5 star weapons? Well, because stats can vary from player to player, your final damage values may differ from mine. Hence my conclusion is that all three 5 star claymores are within margin of error from one another. Now of course if you look at the R5 damage values, things kinda change a little. But we're talking about a vast minority of players here, plus if you already have an R5 5 star claymore, you probably know everything you need to know already. So to give my general recommendations, the Skyward Pride would be better if you have burst uptime issues, the Gravestone would be most consistent in terms of damage, and the Unforged would give you marginally more damage if you have shield generation support. But really, you'd be perfectly fine getting any of these three Claymores, folks. And of course, in Cross SG fashion, I calculated the damage potentials of the other Claymores I talked about as well, with a bonus Claymore, more on that later. So we have 7848 for the Serpent Spine, 7318 for the Prototype Aminus, 7326 for the Skyrider Greatsword. We'll talk about the Rain Slasher in a bit. There are a few considerations here. A. The stats used for this were not optimized for the Serpent Spine. If I had actually switched to my Serpent Spine tuned artifacts, I would probably gain anywhere between 8-12% to more damage, and this is a prime example of what I mean by your mileage may differ for each weapon depending on your stats. And B, the prototype Aminus bonus is hard to calculate for DPS, so what I did was I took an average 
damage per second value of its bonus and factored it in that way. Now the problem with this is it could actually translate to less damage in practice due to the fact that that hit occurs only once every 15 seconds and fights are actually pretty short in this game. Okay, so to sum up Razor's weapon choices, we have the Skyrider Greatsword as the best in slot free to play option anywhere from early game to about level 80, with the prototype Aminus edging it out very slightly beyond level 80. And of course, the Serpent Spine being the overall best 4 star Claymore if you aren't free to play. And of course, we have the Rain Slasher. Yes, I know it looks pretty bad in the numbers, but don't discount it just yet, folks. The reason I didn't talk about the Rain Slasher much is because Electro Charge is a little bugged at the moment, and we don't really know how it'll change when Mihoyo fixes it. There is, however, a good chance that when they do fix it, the Rain Slasher could have the potential to bring very good damage on Razor if you run him with a Hydro support. Now, if you're watching this video while the Rain Slasher is one of the raid up weapons, don't be too quick to dismiss it if you happen to pull one. Keep it and be patient, we could have a gem here. Otherwise, as mentioned, the 5 star claymores are all about equal to one another and you should be happy to pull any one of them for Razor. However, if you do have multiple 5 star claymores and you absolutely must know which is the absolute best for your Razor, again, damage calculator, link in the description. It'll tell you the answer way better than I can. Alright folks, that brings us to the end of part 1 of my Razor guide. Stay tuned for part 2 where we'll explore team compositions and take a look at my Razor and how I run him. As always, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down works too. Share my videos with your friends, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later.